Hey, it's Julian. Today's May 18th, and I took my 13th shot of tea. So I'm officially three months on tea. Woo! One fourth of a year. Pretty, I, I just can't believe it. It's, it's so awesome. So today I'm just going to talk about all of the changes I've seen so far, and I'm going to kind of give you an approximation of when those changes arose, just so people kind of know what they're getting into if they transition. So this won't necessarily be in order, but I'll try to tell you like when things happened. So most recently, I have started to see some pimples on my chest, um, which could be chest hair. I'll let you know if it is, <laughs> or I could, or you all just know that I have some pimples on my chest. Great. Um, looking at <laughs> my brother and dad, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be chest hair because, like, they're not hairy at all. And, like, they've done No Shave November. And they're like, look what I did. And it's like, what? <laughs> they're like, feel. And it's like, I don't feel anything. So yeah, so I don't know. I don't, I'm not optimistic about getting a lot of hair, but that's okay. I don't really need it. Um, okay, also as of um, March 12th, so let's see, I started testosterone February 24th. Um, so that was about like three weeks into being on T. Um, my period stopped. Um, it may have been earlier. I don't remember, but that is probably the biggest miracle of this whole thing. I freaking hated that forever. Um, also my voice started breaking after being on T for five weeks. I think it intensified by six weeks and then obviously it's gotten more intense since then. Um, I would say, let's see, it's definitely kind of like transform, transform more into like a raspy smoker's voice, at least as of like the past three weeks or four weeks. My voice still breaks sometimes, less frequently maybe than five weeks, but like I definitely have to be mindful when I'm singing. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely Smoker's Voice. Great for hard rock and blues singing. So I've been recording that because that's like a gem to have. And then once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> um, well, it's, oh, also I'm definitely more easily angered and irritated. It's not like it doesn't have a huge impact on my life. It's not like I fly into a rage um, and I'm punching the wall and stuff. Um, it's more just like either I'll be talking to someone and I'll feel a little frustrated and then that will kind of increase in intensity and I have to just kind of walk away. Or like someone will do something that annoys me and then after the interaction later on, like just I think about it again and then I start getting all enraged but I don't know if I'd call it enraged it's more just like a little frustrated I might pout I might swear to myself a little bit or go for a walk and then it usually goes away I think it's just kind of like I don't know the fuse my fuse is shorter and then it's like you know the hormones kind of wash over me so it's probably like adrenaline or something or maybe testosterone surge I don't know look it up but hormones are like a really slow means of communication in your body so like they travel through the blood so once you kind of release that it's with you for a while so it's not like I lose um like self-control or anything it's more just kind of like I notice like okay I'm getting a little irritated I make my body's making a bigger deal out of this than it really is I'm just gonna like go for a walk or hang out by myself listen to music it's not that bad um what else? Um, so I've also had um, slight development of a more masculine face. I really can't pinpoint when this began, but I can just say looking at my face overall, I think it looks a little more masculine. Um, but then again, I could just be seeing what I want to see. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, also, I've definitely, I think especially within the first few weeks of taking testosterone my appetite became a lot stronger um and the problem with this is like because you're putting testosterone into a body that didn't originally um produce it I've talked to my primary care person about this it's this is weird but 
basically it's like your appetite isn't necessarily going to be proportional to your body. So like you might be hungrier than your body actually needs, which like I found myself a lot hungrier, um, even if I eat the same amount and I hungrier like later at night and just a lot of times. So it's like kind of disorienting and worrying that you can't really trust your body's own like, you know, hunger clock or whatever. Um, I mean, you can if you are dedicated to getting a lot of exercise and being really active. I'm not really an active person. Like, I go for walks a lot, maybe dance sometimes. I mean, I've had to be more active, but it's like you kind of have to moderate yourself and kind of get used to being hungry, I guess. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate. I will definitely say I have experienced, like, a lot of weight gain. Um, yeah, so, um, trying to work on that, um, also about, like, three weeks ago, um, I had a blood test, and I will say when I, like, first started testosterone, well, before I started testosterone, my cholesterol levels were wonderful, and my, like, triglycerides, which are basically fat cells, I think, um, like, that was great, um, I was totally fine. And then as of three weeks ago, I had my blood tested again, and my cholesterol was good, but not as great as it could be, and my triglycerides had, like, doubled, um, which they were saying they don't see a lot, so, I mean, I don't know, um, I mean, it does, it does happen, but I mean, that could easily be because of the increased appetite and stuff, so that's kind of annoying. Um, yeah, so dealing with, like, weight and diet and stuff is not ideal, but, I don't know, it's just, just to tell you the full truth of, like, what's happened so far, um, oh, also very, very early on, my sense of touch changed a little bit, like, I'm definitely less sensitive to pain, like, you know, if I, like, dig my fingernail to my finger, I barely feel anything, like, I feel something, but it's barely there, and, like, it really, I have to really push my fingernail way into my finger to get much more of a sensation, like, I just, I don't know, I'm definitely less sensitive to pain, which, it's funny, because it kind of, like, explains a lot, where it's, like, if my dad, like, slaps me on the back or something, or pushes me around, and go, or, like, pokes me, and I go, ow, and he's, like, that didn't hurt, it kind of makes sense, like, that if his pain tolerance is higher, because testosterone makes him less sensitive to it, but then I was more, you know, I mostly only had um, estrogen or much lower levels of testosterone because I was, like, female presenting and stuff, like, that I would be more sensitive to it. So, I don't know. I don't know if it, that's just anecdotal, but I don't know. I definitely feel less sensation there. Um, but again, it's not jarring. It's not, it's kind of weird, but it's not that scary. Um, I guess what else? Um... Okay, well, at this point, if you are anyone who knows me in real life beyond YouTube, be it a friend, family member, just anyone, um, please do not continue watching the video. Um, the thing is, I want to give everyone a full description of what I've gone through so far um, so that people know what to expect in their trans transition and to help them decide if they want to transition, but... This is more personal information. I'd prefer people who know me to not know. So please, if you respect me, do not go on. Otherwise, that would be a breach of trust. Okay. So, for people who actually are thinking of transitioning and who don't know me. Um, so, um, one thing that's kind of interesting is as of... I don't know exactly when this happened, but as of like... I don't know, I noticed at least a few days ago, I think my boobs have shrunk, which I think they say is, like, one of the symptoms, um, so that's good, um, yeah, it's definitely become a little less noticeable, um, one thing that's funny is for my consultation for top surgery, <laughs> they said that I could actually do, could potentially do one of the types of surgeries that's only, like, possible with people with a much smaller chest, and, like, I totally didn't think that that was an option. So I don't know if part of it's due to the testosterone or, like, <laughs> if I've always been a member of the Itty Bitty Kitty Committee. Because <laughs> I wasn't aware. But I guess I am now, which is good. Um, 
So I definitely do think there's been some shrinking though. Um, so yeah, there's that, which is a positive part. Um, these are less positive in my opinion. So I will say like one day after I started tea, I started to feel like a little sensation down there. Um, I probably felt it a little bit for like, I don't know, a week or a few days, but it wasn't, it was like a little distracting, but it wasn't that big a deal. I've definitely experienced some bottom growth, but like not a significant amount. I think it was like more sensitive the first few weeks or like me just kind of navigating that or like becoming used to that like part of my body or that change in my body but like I don't think about it at all now like it's really not that sensitive and it doesn't have much bearing on my daily life or what I wear or anything definitely I think that depends on the person because I know the slow fox a fellow youtuber definitely like it was a bigger deal for him and it was more disruptive and annoying and he had to like change the underwear he wears and stuff so I don't know this has just my, been my experience so far and I also don't want to jinx myself because I'm three months in and God knows what else could happen um also um I think this happened probably within the first month but it definitely was like really pronounced as of like two weeks ago or there was like a period of two weeks or something that it was really, really intense, is um, libido does skyrocket, and there's nothing you can really do about that. Um, I think one thing you could do is you could avoid certain things that are aphrodisiacs, like maybe don't eat so much chocolate, um, maybe avoid espresso for a while. I think nutmeg's also one of them. Um, so, I mean, it, it is what it is. It is high, but if you don't want to exacerbate it, then, you know, don't eat those things. Um, but I've definitely been learning to deal with it and manage it um, in ways to, like, not let it distract myself and ways to, like, diminish it. So I think I'm definitely getting more of a handle on it as of, like, the past week. Um, but it is a lot higher. And, like, I think once you, like get that, I don't know, once you, like, get to that point, it really helps you understand men better, which, I mean, you know, I'm transitioning to be a man, but, like, it helps you understand more of the stereotypes and certain behavior. <laughs> I think it's just easier to sympathize, <laughs> and it's, like, kind of, not to, I don't want to, like, support this stereotype at all, but, like, kind of it kind of explains some of the behavior that you hear about um with gay men like especially like I don't know 70s I don't really know when it was with like the bathhouses and just like a lot of sex with a lot of people again I don't want to I don't want to say blanket statements I identify as a queer man too but it's just kind of like well if you have all these people who are really horny and they're attracted to these other people who are super horny. Like, I kind of get it. Um, but anyways, I believe that is all that I had to offer here. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to give a whole lowdown of what's happened. Um, definitely let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, happy to answer all that, um. I think I might also put, no, no, I think, I think that's it, but yeah, all right, well, thank you for watching, I hope this was helpful.